No. Oh. So I'm bumming around the internet, going loo loo and so on, looking for inspiration regarding International Men's Day. And then a wee hamster drops a trailer in my lap like so. I told you all, you all about the South Bank, didn't I? When I, when I was shitlording around London in that one video. The South Bank is like the arty farty capital of London, if not Britain. And, and it's not far from my doorstep. I really should visit more often. It's just, I don't have much in common with with people who like crowds and arty farty stuff. So it's not often anything comes up that's relevant to my interests. I say, being a man is something I do every day, if being can be called doing. Is, is this like, like wow, women of the world, <laughs> except it's, it's the foundation credit module <laughs> rather than the intermediate. Men aren't ready for the world yet. We still need a series of seminars to teach us how to be what we are. The doctor, doctor, there's a thumb growing out of my crotch. Don't worry. Don't worry, you just have an acute case of the mans. I know a liberal arts festival that can help you. Here, have a pamphlet. Look, I'm, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm being facetious. But I, I don't want to be that guy. I don't want to be the douchebag who shits on everything but my thing. Maybe this is exactly the sort of thing we, we, we should be endorsing. I'm at least going to need a second opinion. Is there a hamster in the house? Okay. You there! Watch this bullshit and tell me if you think it's bullshit. I'm watching Being a Man trailer. I'm gonna find out how bad this is, if there's anything to really rant Zerk, or maybe if this is a lightning at the end of the day. We have trouble naming things at, at, at Honey Badger Radio, like as a theme. The two things we do best are question things and have trouble naming things. Some call it Socratic. Others call it autistic. I think Socrates was autistic, yo! Now what? Uh, and yes, I am in a hamster suit. Yes, you are. So, let's begin. Being a man festival celebrates... Ooh, I know this one. Men. Right? I know, I know, it's, uh, it sounds like a stupid question, but, but it's just a formality, like writing your name at the top of the sheet, or taking a basic literacy test. The Being a Man Festival celebrates being a man, right? Being a Man Festival celebrates what boys and men could be. Whoa, 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 wait. It's not a red flag, it's just a yellow one. DEFCON 5. It might just be the phrasing. Okay, 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 alright. Uh, I, I won't pass judgment. I won't pass judgment because I don't know where she's going with this, but what men and boys could be. I mean, it's not just phrasing. The phrasing relates to the philosophy in question, but yes, deactivate Spurg powers. It's still early days. Hmm. Let me let me just let, let me move that into let, let me move that into the gender switcheroo. What women and girls could be. So let's see what what uh, what she says. Women and girls could be. What boys and men could be if the idea of masculinity was something that had a, a wider breadth and more opportunities. Okay, I guess it's my, it passes the sniff test. There's something a little bit... Uh, so men, masculinity has to have a wider breadth. Femininity has to be have a wider breadth of what is acceptable. It's time, space and permission really for boys and men to come together and talk about everything. I guess so. I guess I guess this is not too offensive. Let's let's continue. I wouldn't call it offensive, but it hasn't passed my sniff test. Since when do we celebrate what things could be? Every other traditional celebration we have in just about any culture is a celebration of what we already are, or what we already have. We celebrate birthdays. All you've done is stay alive for another year, but we consider it worth celebrating. And if you're 12 years old, we don't put 13 candles on the cake to celebrate what you could be next year. Because that's not a celebration. It's a prediction. You, you might celebrate when they get into college, and that is, uh, uh, it, in, in some sense, celebrating the future. But you celebrate after 
they get accepted into the college, not just before. You, you don't celebrate getting straight A's until you've actually got the results, and you don't celebrate finishing your exams before your exams. We don't celebrate the unknown. We, we, we have metal testing coming of age rituals for addressing the unknown, such as exams. We have celebrations for what we already have. If we are to give masculinity the time, space and permission to expand its identity, then surely the very first thing we should do is celebrate men just as they are. To reassure men that they don't have to do something in order to be something. That they are already valuable human beings simply for being alive. Because that is and always has been the first step, the first load-supporting pillar when it comes to empowering women. Has it not? As a woman, you can be judged for your choices and you can be praised for your choices, but no choice can render you worthless as a human being. After all, whether you're a housewife or a factory worker or the wife of a CEO, you are the one being victimised. Because you are the one who is valuable. But yeah, <laughs> we haven't even got past the first sentence yet. <laughs> Sorry, folks, this is what we do. I'll, I'll, I'll let you finish. It's time, space and permission, really, for boys and men to come together and talk about everything from sport to mental health, from pornography to dancing. Oh, cool, dancing. What kind of dancing? Dad dancing, sweet. Uh, is there also a short course on dad jokes? Or are dad jokes now classified as a form of sexual harassment? And how long will it be before dad dancing is classified as a form of sexual assault? And a hate crime? I'm not blaming any of you for this. I'm just wondering if and when you're going to get around to addressing the matter and the people who are to blame for it. And by that I don't just mean Zana Joshi. I mean the people who taught her all that shit. Men and women fail in exactly the same way. But only men translate that failure as a failure to live up to an ideal of their gender. Oh, very insightful response. That only men have a gender identity that has to be lived up to. That's, that's actually pretty smart. You're a pretty smart guy, aren't you, David Baddiel? He's a, he's a comedian, whom you'll probably only recognise if you're a child of the 80s and a Brit. Uh, he's, he's a weird one. He's into football and he's into sort of higher reading. And that. So it's, it's hard to find an angle on him. But yes, David, you are arguably correct. Would you say that women, therefore, have the privilege of a secure identity and thereby they have a privilege that men do not have and that this gives them a power that men do not have. No, you very probably wouldn't phrase it like that, David, because you're a pretty smart guy. But um, we've only had two statements so far, and they already kind of contradict each other, in principle. Men have trouble living up to their identity, and we're here to celebrate the unknown future identity of males. Um... Why, uh, why, why don't you celebrate the male identity here and now? Uh, why don't we look at masculinity as a solid construct of particles and not as a cloud of quantum probability? No, 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 that's the last thing we want. No, no, we, we, we don't want men to get complacent or comfortable. Under no circumstances can we drop the carrot or the stick, but we have to help men understand that when they get the carrot, they genuinely will become real men. We have these words like man flu and man up and mansplaining and all these things which are basically ways of saying you know stop talking if you're a man you know you're the strong one you'll be okay yeah don't say but okay here's one of the issues that i'm, I'm probably going to have with this are you going to recognize where that shit comes from yeah i i don't know where the term man up came from probably from armed forces or, or, or maritime dialects like so many of our little sayings and I don't know where the term man flu 
originated. But imagine if we could indeed go back in time and find the first person or persons to popularize the term man flu. What would we what would, what would we say to them? Probably something like, "I don't want to language police anyone, but you should know there is no veracity to your idiomatic assumption." that men complain about respiratory illness more than women do. And it's fairly obvious, with or without hindsight, that your use of language is reflecting your codified dispassion for men, especially men with weak immune systems. On average, men do have slightly weaker immune systems than women. But is that a good reason to mock them? The reason I bring this up is because of that third piece of jargon there. And guess what? We are in fact blessed with the approximate historical coordinates to be able to interact with the person or persons who originated the term mansplaining. Mansplaining, that's obviously sort of become quite an everyday word now. What are the ways that women can combat that then? Right, so... If someone is mansplaining at you. Let's repeat that for clarity. She's not talking about combating the use of these words or the impetus behind their use, like you are, sir. Quite on the contrary, she's calling for the justification of the use of the word mansplaining by forever combating the abstract thing it describes. What are the ways that women can combat that then? Right, so if someone is mansplaining at you. So for those who don't know, mansplaining, which is not a word that I came up with, is a man explaining something to you in a pedantic or condescending manner. <laughs> she didn't come up with it, but someone else did, and she's openly ecstatic about that. And arguably mansplaining or explaining to women has existed since the dawn of time. But what I find really interesting about this is that it's only been in the last five years or so that there has been a word put onto this behavior. Well, n until recently, it's been referred to as patronizing. Spend a, spend a few seconds studying the etymology of the word patronizing or patronizing. It's not a coincidence that it's related to patriarchy. For centuries, we've simply been using the Latin roots of the word mansplaining. But once people started noticing that women do it too, you had to make a new word. Again, I don't want to be the language police, but permit me to watch from the window of my room and report on what the language occupation troops are getting up to today. And it was a term that emerged from the internet, and then the writer Rebecca Solnit wrote an essay about it called Men Explain Things to Me. This is one of the strange things about religious zealots. When an atrocity is committed, you don't even need to prove they did it. They are already jockeying to take the credit for it. And in that story, it's worth noting, she was at a party, she had written a book, and this man was explaining to her that she should really check out this new book that's out, if she hasn't, because it's really good, and, and he wouldn't let her get a word in to explain that it was her book, in fact. <laughs> And actually, he hadn't really read it. <laughs> what a lovely anecdote! Proving nothing except that Rebecca Solnit's readership is composed of pretentious blowhards. I mean, it's the word mansplaining, after all. People who buy books about mansplaining are probably the kind of people who are not interested in having informed discussions. They're interested in learning a glossary of academically endorsed incantations designed to stifle discussion. But to Rebecca Solnit, and to this young lady, and to countless others around the world, the anecdote only proves that men are the pretentious blowhards. But I think there is something very valuable about having a term to call out really complex behavior. And mansplaining, and all these things. Once you have the word, and it's kind of a playful word, it rolls off the tongue, it's maybe even fun to say. Which are basically ways of saying, you know, stop talking if you're a man. You can call it out. And so once the idea of mansplaining existed and became part of the pop lexicon, then you see women in your daily work environments calling people out for doing it. And for that matter, a woman could mansplain too as well. Then why is it called mansplaining? And not... Page, oh shit. 
we, we can't go far back enough to find a dialect in which we didn't name the problem after men, even though women do it too. On MSNBC, Rachel Maddow was calling out people for mansplaining on air. And suddenly it's this thing that everybody recognizes, everyone acknowledges, and you can identify the behavior and bring attention to it. Just so you know, BAM Festival, this is what you're up against. I'm glad, I'm glad you're at least in part in opposition to Orwellian terms like mansplaining, but as long as there are other festivals of equivalent size and influence amassing every day in institutions of further education, festivals of misinformation, which are in favour of these words and are in fact deliberately and systematically implanting them into our collective vocabulary and laughing about it, then your three days of feeble anemic lectures seem like little but an offering of some blue beads. Unless you elect to spend at least some time or calories addressing the 30-ton mega elephant in the room. Are you going to do that? Or are you just going to be like, oh yeah, men get stabbed, but we're going to ignore who's doing the stabbing. We're not gonna. We're not gonna. You know, put them in jail. We're not gonna catch them. We're not gonna put them in jail. We're not gonna give them a trial. We're not gonna ask them to for at least fucking stop stabbing men. No, but but the stabbing is wrong. The stabbing is wrong. You know, the fact that men are being hurt is wrong. The stabber. Eh. What you gonna do? There's a lot of issues that men do not talk about and grow up from a very young age and carry that burden for such a long time. So I think a festival like this is a very good outlet for us to really explore some of the problems we go through. Okay, this would be a good time to look at the festival and see the issues that they've identified that men have. Will they include the fact that men have been subject to uh, decades and decades and decades of propaganda that resembles what a government directs towards enemy soldiers in wartime? Will they mention the fact that men have been accused in the public, uh, the court of public opinion of felony oppression and have never had a defense against that accusation? Certainly not one as substantial as the prosecutor's, uh, the prosecutor's um, pulpit for making their, not, not even making their case. The case was considered closed as soon as the accusation was laid. But, you know, is that going to be one of the listed issues? I don't know. I don't know. This, this might be an op opening to look and, and see what exactly these issues are at the MAN Festival. Everybody can get involved in a festival, they feel welcomed by a festival, they can include themselves in a festival at all sorts of different levels, and it's not formal, there's a great informality. Should I go there? Should I check out just how informal it is compared with other festivals? Can I, can I rock up in the Royal Festival Hall, pitch a tent in the lobby and start selling amyl nitrate to children? It feels like there's a really great energy around this. People are very interested and there are so many different conversations going on around the building. That sounds awful. Do you know where I could buy some acid? I made a film about what being... <laughs> this looks promising. I'll take six mil, please. Put it right there. What being a man is and masculinity and gender and BAM now is, is happening and it's out there online. It was a discovery really for me in terms of an investigative experience. I'm getting, I'm getting more and more tempted to, to, to investigate this investigative experience of yours, which I think on my part is called transvestigation. I'm a private transvestigator. You have to respect my identity and give me a safe space. My pronouns are Zephalim, Nephilim, and the Braille rendering of the Swahili translation of the hieroglyphic symbol formerly known as Prince. Yesterday I thought I'd just come along, see a friend and leave, but I actually ended up talking to lots and lots of different people. Cool. Did you do anything other than this platonic speed dating you seem to be describing? I don't, I don't want to be a s stereotyping Simon, but men tend to have this penchant for doing things. Yeah, I, I know I said earlier that you know we shouldn't have to do things in order to be things, but you can still have... You know, a penchant for doing things despite being okay with just being. Men do talk to each other, but on the whole, they'd rather talk 
shoulder to shoulder than face to face. Because they're doing something together. And that can either that can be anything from frontline infantry to gaming. This is arguably part of being a man. We're not quite like women. We don't solve our problems by sitting around and talking. Because men's problems usually involve something in the material world. Something heavy that actually needs moving. Bums on seats, darling. Bums on seats. After each session, the people that come up and just want to have extend the conversation, they just want to carry on talking and ask more about some of the points. What are the points? Like, this feels really vague. I just asked a question and about four or five people came and chatted to me afterwards, like checking if I was okay and seeing uh, like if I needed more advice and also their own views and their own stories. Of what? Uh, but where are the concretes? Like, what, what is it that's going on here? What's being... Uh... There's an, an abundance of issues that men find it hard to talk to. And this festival, hopefully, it started that, that um, you know, uh, dialogue amongst men. Men have issues that they have trouble talking about. And this festival, hopefully, started the dialogue among men. You mean the men's rights movement? Isn't a thing. No, 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 no. We, we don't talk about the people who do talk about the 30-ton mega elephant in the room. Because we're not supposed to talk about the elephant. And anyone who does is a misogynist. We can, however, sit across the breakfast table and talk incessantly about the 30-ton mega footprints that keep mysteriously appearing in the butter. We at the Being a Man Festival are not in the business of advocating for men's human rights because we've been informed by intelligence that men's rights is simply a code word for extreme anti-feminism. Feminism is definitely not a problem, but the men's rights movement is definitely is a problem. These are your marching orders. Consider them when performing the frog march. And it's not just men, it's like women as well. So everyone get involved, but it's like focused on men. Well, you just described the men's rights movement, uh, you know, properties thereof. So when we say, what about the men, that doesn't make us misogynists. I mean, this whole festo festival of yours is you saying, what about the men? So next time someone brings up the subject of parental rights, or birth control, or genital integrity, I get to say, what about the men? And I haven't committed a sin by saying that. Is that right? Or are those subjects off the table? Are they strictly women's issues? Okay. See what I tell you? Shoulder to shoulder. Stand on the giants if necessary. It's a bold person that would set something up like this. Oh, really? What's so bold about it? I'm not, I'm not in the least bit bothered by what's going on there, but say that again. It's a bold person that would set something up like this. It's bold to set something up like this. By bold you mean brave, yes? And by brave you mean risky. It's a bold person that would set something up like this. It's risky to set up an event for men's benefit. Could you perhaps tell us in your own words what those risks are? Is it likely to get bad press? Is it likely to receive bomb threats and other such terrorism? Yes. Is anyone going to talk about the terrorists? Unlikely. There are two kinds of terrorists we're not allowed to mention. One because they'll murder us all, and the other because they'll get our funding cut. But I, I, I think this festival will just grow and grow to get other men to come out and understand their life and understand there's more to life than just being macho and um, egotistic, I suppose. More to life than being macho and egotistic. Well, maybe she didn't. Maybe she just, you know, it was just off the cuff. This seems awfully judgmental of somebody's gender expression, though. I'm hoping that people take away a bit more confidence about their place in the world. Well, why wouldn't... <laughs> well, it's, it's nice to have these, these vague, warm feelings, but there's a reason why boys and men don't feel confident about their place in the world because there's a huge movement telling them they have no place. 
We've only got one life in which to try to get as far as possible with understanding each other. And this is a place that really believes in openness and dialogue and talk and expressing what's happening in our lives. Comments are disabled. Hmm, I really don't, I can't make it, I can't actually say anything about this because I don't know. Uh, let's, um, let's go back a bit and find a, uh, let's find out what they, what they talk about at this festival. So welcome back everybody. Okay, wow, 12, 2014, being a man, a being a man, a call out unto booze. Akala. And I, and I know you said on taboos there, but in my brain I heard Akala. On taboos. <laughs> okay, this is going to have to be a two parter, folks, and possibly a three, four, and five parter if we find something worth investigating. What will Alison and Mike discover in the dark heart of Bam? Will it be enlightening? Will it be horrifying? Will Mike buy a weekend pass and end up investigating the event in person? Find out! Now! At Honey Badger Radio. Link in the annotation and the lobo. I will meet you in the deep web. Kapah! <laughs>